Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the M4J Network here on OpenTTD. Now before we get into the episode proper, have a look at Bar City Central. Looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Uh, I think I mentioned this last episode, uh, basically because I've been ill. This is the first video I'm recording actually since I have recovered. Um, I've got my voice back, which is very nice. Uh, I say voice back, it's mostly back. It's here and there. It's It comes and goes. Um, but anyway, Bar City Central looks a little bit different. Now, I believe last episode was the one where I mentioned the fact that there is a patron-only video that has been recorded, which is me rebuilding Bar City Central and also the uh, north and south approaches, as well as a little bit down to the west as well, I believe, uh, through Bar City setting Brian on towards Drentbourne. Um, so Bar City Central is now much bigger than it used to be. It's got many, many more platforms. Um, I think I did the maths last time out. It went from something like six. No, not six. Something like ten to twenty. Something like it's, it's basically it's pretty much doubled in size. That's the main thing. So we've got lots of capacity now for extra services, which is what I'm introducing today. Uh, so last time out, I believe we did the uh, Drentbourne extension. So if the train that originally ran to Drentbourne now runs all the way through to Bar City non-stop from Guard City St Mark, and we also added in, <coughs> I believe it was one or two services between. Uh, Bar City Central and Fort Breadborough Celestial Airport, which is sort of the northern limit of the commuter part of the Bar City commuter belt. Uh, the rest of the line going up towards Wenningpool is still part of the commuter belt north, but um, it's not really commuting when you get to that stage. It's more just, you know, traveling between A and B. Uh, but today we're going to be adding the rest of those northern services. So the Fort Breadborough Celestial Airport service, uh, the second one. So there's one that goes goes to all stations and there's one that does uh, it, well, it skips some stops it's basically a semi-fast service and then we also add a service to I believe it's called Radingston which is the interchange station that we built uh, I think it was during the last live stream actually we finished that one off um, well, episode 49 I think it might have been but uh, yeah basically it's the one where the lines from Nut Hill City Centre and also out to the east uh, Great Sludington Junction stations like that, they all converge onto the Bar City commuter belt at that one point. And there is a semi fast service that will go between Bar City Central and Radingston. Uh, now, at the moment, this is episode 53 that we're playing here. Um, I've recorded up to episode 55 or 56 plus uh, the Patreon only episode. So I'm quite a few weeks ahead in terms of recording. So you'll have to bear with me a little bit as I remember what episode is what. Um, I think I've got it right with the services that we're adding today. Although we're adding three. Oh no, we're adding two. Maybe we are adding the Radingston one today as well. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to find the right trains to use as well. Um, and this actually brings me quite nicely onto today's subject, which is rolling stock. Uh, not rolling stock in real life necessarily, but rolling stock in the M4J network. And the reason this has suddenly become uh, a conversation topic, shall we say. I was about to say an issue, but it's not an issue at all. It's a topic. Um, basically, we have one franchise owner currently on the M4J network. Uh, they own the Great Western franchise. I won't reveal who they are. Some people like to be kept anonymous. Y you can tell who it is anyway if you read it discord messages and things like that um, but I'll try not to directly call people out or name people if I can because it's not necessarily fair some people don't want to be called out some people do you know it's easy just to not call people uh, anyway this isn't relevant uh, what is relevant is that person has recently submitted to me uh, a list of seating capacities on trains as well as uh, the current stock that we use which I think is 151s 153s 15 zeros um, and then things like HSTs and loco hauled stock uh, and they've basically come up with a new plan for new rolling stock one thing I love is they factored in the time period which is awesome because when I see things like this from people uh, the first thing I do worry about is ah have they remembered the fact that this is meant to be set late 80s early 90s yes awesome next thing have they remembered the fact that this is uh, I don't want to say a, a network that's down on its luck, but doesn't necessarily have the, the budget to be able to afford brand spanking new trains every time a new line is open, which is why we've got a lot of old trains sort of knocking about, um, particularly out of GSG uh, and also out of Bartholomew Square. Um, a lot of those trains are going to be from like the early 60s, 70s, 
and some of the northern trains and I know this is a stereotype in the UK because northern used to get all the old trains from London and other parts of the country um, but it is kind of something that I wanted to continue with the M4J network so all the north, northeast, northwest services are going to be run by really old rickety either first generation DMUs or second generation DMUs and first generation EMUs so really really old really really old basically carriages with a pantograph stuck on the top um, that's that's what's basically going to be happening but uh, so the new the new trains that will be running on Great Western and this ties in nicely with some of the extensions that have been promised and uh, the reason I'm talking about this in this episode is because I want to try and incentivize people even more to, to uh, not so much be patrons as such but to get involved and, and you know even if it's a dollar a month or two dollars a month I think it is you, you, you unlock the basic franchises I want more people to feel like they can get involved and be part of, of constructing this network because it's it's ever growing this project it's getting bigger and bigger and more and more ambitious and as you'll see over the next few episodes I've kind of got my head around scheduled dispatch now and how it works uh, and I'm starting to flood the Bar City area with trains and by the end of this batch of episodes that I've recorded here so I think it is episode 55 is the last one so over the next couple of weeks um, there's something like eight or nine new services introduced to go alongside the existing ones each one of those has sort of four or five trains per service so it's something like 60 to 70 trains give or take that will be introduced to the network uh, and so far it's all working very very nicely and I'm very very happy um, I've been keeping quite a close eye on things we've extended the Bar City commuter belt south to um, Plenborough Torina it will also be heading down towards Frontford which is in the southeast corner of the map I don't think it will reach Frontford uh, Prontford, sorry not Frontford um, I don't think it will reach Prontford I think it will terminate at the um, the interchange station between Bar City and, and Prontford um, but yeah it, it's, it's starting to get populated again the network and I've done a lot of speed limit charts you can go and follow the link in the description down below and you can see how many of those I've done over the last few weeks Basically, while I've been ill, um, I've had a lot of free time, and I don't have the uh, the virus that's going around at the moment, which I will not name. Um, I I had just a cold, really. It, it sort of turned into a bit of flu towards the end. I did have achy joints, and there was a couple of times where I thought, oh god, maybe it is more serious. But it seems to have passed now at the time of me recording this. So I'm feeling very, very good. I always get a cold around late February early March anyway and I think this one was, was kind of like a week or so late um, and it's, it's that really unfortunate thing of you, you get ill at just the wrong time so you know with all the news that's going around at the moment uh, everyone trying to stay safe and, and be careful and I found myself basically quarantining myself anyway just in case but I'm good I'm all good everything's fine here uh, but yeah it meant I had a lot of free time so I've gone through and rebuilt a lot of routes. Um, I've also gone through and done a lot of speed limit changes, stuff like that. Uh, and it's all been building up to a huge influx of new train, I say new, old new trains being introduced to the network over the next few episodes. Uh, and that goes all across the network. So currently on the Great Eastern and the Great Western, we only have one train per service running. Now I've got my head around scheduled dispatch a little bit more and how to sort of manipulate the system when it comes to releasing trains for the first time. So I think that was the problem was I was just spewing out hundreds of trains in one go and then they're all getting bunched up and then that just causes uh, a never ending um, delay. So I've kind of solved that problem uh, and you'll see how I've done that um, over the next few episodes as well. But it means I can go back to the old parts of the network now so in and around guard city for example where i'd basically written it off and thought okay this isn't going to work i can now go back and say i know how to make this work uh so it's, it's all about when, when you release your trains how many trains you release at once that kind of thing so the new uh system i've got in place there's no infrastructure changes required i don't have to rebuild stations i don't have to rebuild depots nothing like that which saves me a lot of time and effort it's all about timing and it's making sure that you release things on time and you just supervise it to start with make sure that everything is running as smoothly as expected uh, and then if there are any problems you can quickly fix it before it becomes a cascading issue so I can now go back and redo all of that 
So um, to the person who owns the Great Western franchise, I won't be upgrading stock yet. I'll be keeping the old stock for a little while longer. But um, I like the fact that that sheet was made. Uh, I've, I liked reading through it, even if it wasn't going to go ahead anytime soon. But it is going to go ahead in the not too distant future. Uh, but the old stock, so the trains that will be um, phased out and replaced by the new stuff, that will be remaining on the network. I'm not going to get rid of it like I normally would. So, for example, the um, the loco hauled stock that currently runs between GSP and I think it's Plindom Junction is the main stopping service that uses locos. Uh, that's actually going to be repurposed as a cross-region. Um, well, you know, that th that will transfer to cross-region. Uh, cross-network, isn't it, the main thing? And then we've got cross-region and cross-country are the two sort of sub-franchises that are part of that. So it's all going to get repurposed and reused, and I will set up paths uh, in the future for between different maintenance depots so that I can send trains from here to there depending on where they're needed, essentially. Uh, and it all sounds very geeky and very nerdy, I know, and I say that a lot now because I, I hear myself, don't worry, when I'm saying these things out loud, I, I know what it sounds like, but I love doing it. And that's the reason why this series has been a lot of fun to do, because I do love doing it. I love the little nerdy stuff, the little... You know the nitty gritty stuff that no one else really does when they play open ttd i like it because it makes this channel stand out and hopefully other people notice that as well um but yeah it's, it's been an absolute riot uh right what do you see me doing here so i'm rebuilding a, a new depot this is lake buena i believe this depot is and it's kind of a play on words so um disney world in florida in orlando uh the sort of area that that was built in, I think one of the lakes still carries the name, is Buena Vista, which is good view in Spanish. Um, and I, I like that name. I think they had a video distribution company for a while called Buena Vista as well. Uh, and I like that name. So we've got Lake, is it Lake View? I think we have actually on the north where the uh, the overhead electrified trains come from. And then this one is just Lake, lake Buena, uh, which technically means Lake Good doesn't really make sense but I'll keep the name because I like the name um, <clears throat> excuse me there's me saying I'm feeling a lot better and then I suddenly get a tickle in my throat but yeah this is this is Lake Buena motive power depot this is kind of the hub for Bar City uh, commuter south trains um, they're all come under the Bar City Com uh, connect franchise for now although it will get renamed in the future I am also considering splitting them into north and south just to uh, make the franchises a little bit more manageable because again, the idea is at some point in the future, someone who supports me on Patreon will come in and take this over. So I'll still run all the tracks and the stations and things like that, but they'll run their own trains on the existing infrastructure. Uh, and that's, that's as I said, it's the incentive. It's to try and get more people involved. If you're looking at this and thinking, I, I like the look of this, uh, then feel free to support me on Patreon. The link is in the description. It can be as little as a dollar a month if that's all you want. Or it can be as much as, I think, 25 is the current limit. Well, I'm thinking of adding an extra tier just to make things a bit more interesting. Uh, but you can head over to my website as well, m4jmedia.com. And go on to the current series, M4J Network page. And then go scroll down to the franchise details. And you can find out more about what franchise holders actually, uh, you know, the perks that you would get from it. Because um, it's not just rail. You can also get road, air, and sea franchises if you so wish currently it's restricted to one franchise per person and that's for all modes you can't have a bus company and, and a rail company you can only have one or the other but i'm thinking of making it so that the the higher tiers actually can have access to two or three different franchise types because again i think it'll make it more interesting um plus i i strongly doubt that I'm going to get hundreds and hundreds of Patreon supporters and this network is pretty big so the more people coming on to, to help me out and um, with running certain aspects of it the better and I think the regions will be dependent on what rail if you choose rail which rail air, uh, sort of region franchise you choose so for example if you are the owner of the Great Eastern franchise and then you decide you want a bus company as well your bus company will sort of be in the same area as your rail company so basically you can coordinate services you can decide if you want a feeder bus that, that uh, ties into your rail services then you're free to do so same with the airports as well your airport will be within the area that your rail routes serve so again uh, 
if you've got the Gar Guard City Great Northern franchise, you could have Guard City Ponfingford Airport as your hub airport. And then you can coordinate your rail services with your air services, and so on and so on. Um, it's, it's kind of all blue sky thinking at the moment. It's all kind of hypothetical. Once people actually start pledging and getting involved, then obviously it will become a lot more uh, detailed and a lot more concrete. But right now, I'm just sort of throwing ideas out there. And I'm open to ideas from you guys as well. If there's anything, any extra tier rewards that you guys would like to see, feel free to suggest them down in the comment section below. Or you can head over to my Discord and, and ask there. Uh, or you can head over to my Reddit community and ask there. Um, and again, I'll do my usual shout out now. If you've downloaded my network from my website and you want to share stuff that you've built on it, feel free to do so. Uh, you can post pictures and videos on my Discord on the M4J Network chat. If for whatever reason the picture or the uh, video is too big to post on Discord, feel free to make a post on my Reddit community. Links to both should be in the description down below. Uh, and yeah, do do share your stuff because I, I really do want to see it. I want to see what kind of things, um, you know, how people take and an idea that I came up with and run with it basically uh, it's ba it, you know it's, it's what I've built my channel on so I'd like to see what you guys are doing as well right I need to rest my voice because I'm going to be recording four more episodes after this plus all the other series on the channel that has been going on uh, will be going on over the next few weeks so um, there's what six minutes six and a bit minutes left of this video I'm gonna let the music take over and uh, play you guys out for the rest of the video because that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say rolling stock franchises patreon all that good stuff. I believe the Patreon video will be going up. So when you, you're watching this on the... What's today? So I'm recording this on the 16th. Uh, so three days from now is the 19th. You're going to be watching this on the 26th, I believe. So the next Tuesday, the following Tuesday, should be the first Patreon video. Uh, if you are a patron of mine and you haven't linked your Discord account to your Patreon account, please do so. Because currently... Um, I don't think either of my patrons have and I'll be posting links to the patron only videos in a patron only chat on discord as well as posting them on patreon uh, so do make sure that you've got it all synced up and, and working uh, if you wish to be able to watch those videos otherwise um, yeah that's pretty much it from me so thank you very much guys for watching don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and of course if you're enjoying the series. Drop some comments down below with ideas for future episodes. Also head over to Reddit and Discord as I've already said uh, and you can leave your suggestions there too. Uh, besides that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching. Enjoy the time lapse, enjoy the music and until next time, I will see you soon.